Okay, this is part one of doing a valve adjustment on an XS650, video number two. I'm going to be showing how to set up um, to make sure you're at top dead center to do the valve adjustment. We've already gone, gone over a couple things about um, the intake valves in part one, the intake valve, the exhaust valve, and different parts of the motorcycle. Okay, in order to do this correctly, the valve, the piston has to be at top dead center on the compression stroke. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little looking around and make sure we know what's what here and we'll get it in line. First thing like I said you always want to remember is to make sure whenever you're doing the valve adjustment your stopping point and adjustment point is the line on the right side of the T, the timing line, is in line with the mark on the rotor. Okay that's where you want to be. Alright so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up here and we're going to turn the rotor counterclockwise only and see what's going on. See which valve's moving. If you're on the compression stroke, when you start turning the uh, rotor around, the piston's going to go down and it's going to come back up. So this, the exhaust valve, should start opening once I start doing this. And we're going to start from there. So there's the exhaust valve opening. That means you're in stroke four. The piston is going up and it's pushing out all the exhaust. And there we go. That has gone through its full rotation. Now it's it is uh, closed again. This is where we're going to start from. This is exactly how I do it. So this is my first step when I do this. I got my 17 millimeter nut turning counterclockwise on my rotor, and I'm going to turn it and watch this. Watch the intake valve start opening. This is stroke one. Right now the piston's going down, sucking in air and fuel mixture into the engine, into the cylinder. It's opening, you can see it by going down, and now it's starting to come up. Once it stops going up, you want to stop turning. Okay? Now the valve has gone up. Now stop turning. Now this is where you want to go down and start looking at your rotor. Okay? Again, I'm looking for this timing mark here. When the rotor comes back around, the rotor mark comes back around, I want to have it aligned by the mark, the timing mark on the timing plate. This is very tricky. It's very, very frustrating to do this. If you go past the mark, just keep going back around the horn. Don't go clockwise. Don't go back. So I'll show you. I'm going to be looking right here until I see that mark, and then I'm going to stop. There's num see this number plate? I don't know if you can see it, but this number, this group of numbers right here. Once you see that, you know that timing mark is going to, the rotor mark is going to start coming around. There she is, okay? There's the rotor mark. I want to align that with the T. Once you get here, it's a little bit of finesse to get it because it wants to jump. It's going to keep jumping and jumping and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So go really slow, a little bit, 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 and get it right there, okay? Now we are at top dead center on the compression stroke. I know this because for one I saw the stroke one the intake valve opened then closed then I turned the rotor back around and put it right on the timing mark. So you can see where we are with the timing mark. Okay? The second way to check is you go up here to your spark plug hole and you look in your spark plug hole and you'll see a dirty little piston in there. I don't know if you can see it but if you look in there with your own naked eyes you'll be able to see the top of a dirty little piston. Okay, That way we know that the engine is at top dead center on the compression stroke. And now we can go to checking the valves. What you want to do is you want to get your feeler gauges and you want to get, right now I'm looking at the intake valve and my intake valve is 0 .06 millimeter which is 0 .0024 inch. So I'm going to get my 0 .0024 inch feeler gauge and I'm going to put it in there and see if it goes. And it goes. Okay. I'm going to go to the next size up, which I always say to do. It's kind of a go and no-go. So the correct one went. Okay, that one went. That's good. You just want it to drag. Just You can probably hear it. Just drag a little bit, okay? 
Now I'm going to go to the next size up, and it doesn't go. You don't want to force these. Just push them in on their own accord. Let's see how that doesn't go in. That's good. That's what you want. You want the correct one to go, the next size up to not go. That way you know they are correct. That valve does not need to be adjusted. Now, if you would have had, say, the correct one go, and then you got the next size up, and it goes, obviously it's too loose. If the correct one doesn't go, it's too tight. You want to make sure these are in spec. There's a lot of school thoughts on these as well, as about what spec is what and what you should be doing. Um, a lot of people like to have them adjusted a little bit different. I prefer to have them per manual. And again, make sure you check the manual. Okay? Um, so we have turned the rotor around. We watched the intake valve open and then close, which was stroke one. And then we turned the rotor back around till we got to top dead center. Okay, and then we looked in the spark plug hole and we saw our dirty little piston. That way we know we're at top dead center. When it's at top dead center, there's no pressure on either valve. You can hear it. There's no pressure on the intake valve. And there's no pressure on the exhaust valve. You want to check the exhaust valve the same way you check the intake valve to see if they're off. If they're good, they're good. If they're not, then you're going to have to adjust them, and that'll be part two.